the tubes back to Easy Juice Game Podcast for the week of, oh my god, April 14th, almost halfway through the year already. I'm, of course, your host, Elijah, with a solo episode this week. I'm glad you could stop by. Remember, I post every single Friday. Very chill vibes today. It's a beautiful day in Georgia. I hope it's beautiful where you are in your own way that you interpret that. Remember, we talk about the news. I bring you the news every single week. We discuss it. We go over it. I theorize. I analyze. And you at home respond. Remember, this is a conversation. You also have to respond with something. Whether it be a thought, an idea, maybe a counterpoint to something I bring up. As I don't say my ideas merely to say them, I merely open them up for others to judge. So if you disagree with something, don't worry. Comment section, I always, always reply to the comments. Twitter at emium 1000 if you have something to discuss as well. Always open. That's what she said. Not so rapid fire. Sega recently released the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. This was about two weeks ago, but I wanted to bring this up because this is a very cool April Fool's joke. It's almost like a visual novel-esque kind of thing going on. Um, it looked very interesting. I actually might play this if I have like a couple hours to spend. I'm not a huge visual novel guy, but it seems so hilarious that Sonic was murdered, and I need to see how that ends. I might just read a synopsis about it, but it was very funny looking, so I definitely recommend everyone go check it out as it's the best April Fool's joke. It's funny, and then it turns out to be an actual thing that you can do, go do. Very big story here. Sony is moving away from you know, uh, from Dreams, Media Mako specifically as well. Media Mako has announced that they are moving on from their live support for Dreams to another project. They specify this uh, said project. It's not Dreams related. Nor is it a sequel in any way. So they very much wanted to specify that this is not Dreams again, which I think a lot of us are happy about that. I think Dreams was a very cool idea, and, and the execution was actually incredibly brilliant with a lot of the things they did. The problem is there was nothing to do when you made your game. It just kind of sat there. There was kind of a little bit of community. I remember when it launched, there was only a couple thousand people even in it. And I remember some projects getting kind of viral, on Twitter, and I, I use like lowercase viral, but it was never really very big. And um, I'm reminded of um, when they entered early access because it was talked about forever. Uh, they entered early access and they said they would turn early access off when they got through the sales of their early access keys, and that never happened. They never actually turned off sales. So you could kind of like look through the mirror there. Uh, uh, the uh, the usual two way mirror or one way mirror of the PlayStation Store and PlayStation sales, and kind of see like, okay, that was never successful because you never turned off early access, meaning you never sold enough, uh, in order to need to turn it off, which was always very sad. And then of course there was like the kind of statistics of like, like, a couple bots could like figure out like, oh, only this amount of people have even played the game, and stuff. It was always very sad numbers. I wish it. I wish it succeeded only because it was a very cool idea and it was very nice. Uh, it was a very streamlined way of making a game. And I've seen things that were very incredible on that platform. The only problem is it never really was shown any support aside from we got some blog posts. They did the Impy Awards awards, which was like a thing that they awarded their own people with, I think a year or two ago, or, or they did that for two years or something like that. Um, and they never got the obvious, at least to me, obvious, maybe not as so for other people, but this thing never made it PC, which was very strange. Uh, I think that told everyone once, it, once it didn't come to PC in like the first few years that PlayStation was really releasing PC games, I think that tells you all that you need to know that this was kind of destined to go away. I think Media Monocle spent way too much time on this. I think their last game... Here we're gonna we're gonna take a second. We're gonna look up Media Molecule. I don't remember when their last game was. I think it was Little Big Planet three on the PS three. Let's see. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, and that would have been in like 2013. Is that true? Let's see. 
uh no tearaway unfolded they this was co-developed so if you want to say um oh that's right no little big planet 3 wasn't developed by mina monocle that was sumo digital with mina monocle helping uh them start it up and they did tearaway in 2013 and then tearaway unfolded in 2015 but that was co-developed with tarsier studios so they haven't really made a single project since 2013 like just by themselves project uh since we're thinking just a full-fledged game and now we're seeing dreams go from their f- launch which was in 2020 i don't believe that's when they hit early access so te- it's technically been out a little longer than that but I, I don't, it doesn't take a sage to know this wasn't working right it doesn't take someone incredibly smart to figure out that this isn't going as planned they're probably going to ditch this and there we go they did Shocking no one, ex-Stadia head Phil Harrison left Google in January, around the time the Google Stadia service was closed. As reported by VGC, two Google employees with knowledge of that matter stated as such. This guy, man. This, this, he, he the, the, <laughs> the, the projects he has left in his wake are incredibly impressive. Uh, Google Stadia joins uh, that such, as it slowly evaporates into nothing Similar to things like Leah on live. These things. This is a fun one. God of War Ragnarok has a new game plus mode. Comes with new armor, enhancements, and a level cap increase. Very cool. Very strange it took them this long. Um, several months since the game's been out. And they're just now adding this thing. I feel like maybe it gives the game a second wind. Maybe. Because technically there's new content. But like not that much. Uh, and I don't think this is enough to incentivize people to buy it that haven't already bought it, which I imagine that's the only thing they care about because they have no other way to add money to the game. Uh, they don't have microtransactions or anything, so it's either that you just buy the game again, which I don't know if that's enough to get people to come back. Uh, I don't know. Very strange when, when they did this. They did this with God of War as well. That was like a year later, and they added a new game plus. It's like, okay, that's cool, but like, why didn't you do that sooner? Very strange. GamesBeat has reported that former Bioware executive producer Mark Dyer has come back as a consultant for the upcoming game Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Furthermore, the Mass Effect team will be assisting with the further polishing and development of the Dragon Age title. Of course, this can be done as Mass Effect 4 is still in pre-pro, which is pre-production. I don't know why I said pre-pro. EA states that Dragon Age has been in post-production since September. So it's been kind of getting ironed out since September until it gets released. Um, I will say post-production doesn't mean that, although it means the game can probably be played from start to finish. Uh, it's probably still janky as all hell at that point. So it's still probably a ways away. I wouldn't be shocked, honestly, if we get at the end of this year, but I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't doubt them waiting, uh, until early next year to really capitalize, uh, and move away from things like Spider-Man and Starfield that are going to be coming out. It's going to be a heavy holiday. I don't know if they want to go up against that. Maybe they don't care. Dragon Age is not really relevant to those other two things. Uh, you could argue maybe Starfield, but not really. And Dragon Age is a big enough name that it probably draws eyes, regardless of what goes on around it. We'll have to see. I want this to be good. Um, the leak footage did not instill any sort of confidence in me whatsoever. We'll have to see. A lot of games media have previewed Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This was semi-recently. It's about a week ago, I believe. You can go check that out if you'd like. I have nothing to add. I'm waiting for the game. There was a cool trailer that I did I didn't watch. It looked cool with like the previews I saw of it, like the you know, little couple seconds preview that I go on Twitter and things. I'm waiting for this game to come out. I don't want to see anything. I know I'm gonna buy it. Why do I need to see any of this? It looks cool. Look it looks like it's gonna be fun. Can't wait. Uh Final Fantasy 16 has gone gold ahead of its June 22nd release. It's already gone gold, meaning it's just polishing phages now. Now, if you're listening to this uh when it goes live, you do you or you do and can go watch a PlayStation State of Play centered completely around Final Fantasy 16, if you'd like. Again, another thing where I'm like, I, I might not s- go watch it because, again, I kind of want to be surprised. I kind of like that I don't know anything about it. I do not know the protagonist's name. I think I was told it at one point in something, and I don't remember. I think it's a dumb name, like Clive or something. Um, so, so there's that. 
I think I know the setting where it, it, people keep saying it's very Game of Thrones, which is like, okay, cool. And I remember hearing that the summons are almost like nuclear bombs and countries like own them and, and use them like warfare and things like things like that. I, it's really all I know. And I'm very excited. I don't really want to know anything else. So I kind going to stay away from additional coverage. Uh, a very cool controller came out uh, by Xbox. And it is a green controller it lit in, in uh, both ways. It is both a green controller and also um, it is used uh, with, po quote, recovered plastics with one third of it made from reground and reclaimed materials. Um, Microsoft is a big net neutral company. And they I believe they said they want to be net new uh, carbon neutral. Sorry, net neutral carbon neutral. But I want to say it was 2050 or 2040, meaning they had no additional carbon to the atmosphere. It's a very cool controller. Go look it up. Um, it's very, it's like a dark green in the front. It's meant to look like a bunch of controllers put together, because it's meant to look like a bunch of different controller parts, like were were put on this thing. It looks nice. I like it, and I like the idea around it. You also do get a um controller battery with it. Uh, not free of charge. I believe it's seventy five bucks, seventy four ninety nine. So you can go check this out if you'd like. It's cool. It's cool for me. I'm an Elite Controller guy. Speaking of Elite Controllers, they did announce that there are new con colors for the Elite Controller customization options on the Xbox.com store. I'm 100% making an Elite Controller very soon. The colors look way too good. I think I'm straight up going to make one probably by the end of next week and go ahead and get one ordered. Very excited. A new trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is out right now. It was very good. I watched it. Um, just out of sheer curiosity, because again, this was one of those things where I don't know, mind knowing a little bit more about it, because I know at the end of the day, it's the same exact story that they've told a million times with slight differentiations and variations. So when I watched it, um, yeah, it was cool. Uh, a bunch of people are freaking out. Uh, I am not one of those people. I think it looks good. I think it looks like it, it's great, even. Um, I, I don't think this is like the biggest of big games, but I know a lot of people disagree with that. And are actually incredibly excited for this game, which, hey, I'm happy for them. That's everything for Not So Rapid Fire. Let's ask a question that I'm, of course, asking myself, but of course I'm asking you at home. Which is, what have you been playing? Now, of course, you answer in the comments or tweet at me. And I'll, of course, answer you right now. Uh, One, one answer is Persona 4 Golden. There's been nothing but Persona 4 Golden. I wanted, I kind of got the itch. To really play a really good JRPG. And Persona 4 Gordon was on Xbox, of course, for quite a while now. And I really felt like I should go and play it and get some achievements. And really have a playthrough ready to go um, on my Xbox. And I have to say, I have not set this game down. I have, I am using a guide. I have played it before on Vita, actually. Um, I'm using a guide because I wanted to kind of maximize this playthrough as much as possible. I didn't want to... Um, do mess something up, not get one of the achievements, and have to replay the entire game again to get like one achievement. So I'm doing it so I don't have to worry about the max out social link achievements ever again. Um, and I want to have, I wanted to have a complete playthrough. I actually missed, I want to say like two Arcana in my original playthrough of this game, because uh, there are two characters that I do not remember or recognize at all. Uh, maybe even three, if I'm being honest. And it was very nice, like getting to hang out with them and kind of learn their stories. I do still believe Persona 5 Royale is like, I mean, really just much, much, much better than this game uh, in just multiple ways, characters, writing, etc. But this is still a great game. This is still a, I mean, I really think we're we're describing tens here. Like, uh, and you guys know how much I hate numbers, but it's like saying 110 and 110. I mean, th these are both incredible, perfect games in my mind. Just one's got more perfect i guess i don't know <laughs> um but i do recommend this to anyone if just know what you're getting into this is a hardcore jrpg uh probably as hardcore as it gets you're literally a japanese student that like has to live a life go to school but also like on the side they're trying to save society from uh these murders that are happening there it's very 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 interesting all but you have to really know what you're getting into you're getting into a uh, dungeon crawler with a Japanese lifestyle like components with like a Sims like social link system where like people can uh, like what you say and not like what you say. And like there's romance options. It, it gets very, very deep very quickly. 
Um, it is not for the faint of heart, although I think everyone should at least give it one try. Just see if they like it. Let's talk about some patents. And let's talk about some new hardware and Rumor Roundup. That's going to be pretty much centered around Rumor Roundup. And this is coming from Tom Henderson over on Insider Gaming. This is... Sony might be working on a new handheld. Let's see what it is. Now, I'm going to be reading exactly from Insider Gaming here. Uh, only because to rewrite this gentleman's work seems wrong, as I would be quoting him almost the entire time. So I'm just going to read, again, from Insider Gaming, Tom Henderson. Make sure you go give this a click so it at least gets the click as I had to read this to you. Following days of speculation, Insider Gaming can report that there's a new PlayStation handheld in development. Codenamed the Q Lite, the next PlayStation handheld is the next piece of Sony hardware that aims to be yet another piece of hardware that requires the PlayStation 5. Insider Gaming understands that the Q Lite is not a cloud streaming device, but instead lets but instead, sorry, uses remote play with the PlayStation 5, a feature the console giant has been pushing these past couple weeks, of course. Remote play being a big deal. They, of course, partnered with, um... Oh, my God, what's their name? I, I bought one of their things, Backbone. They partnered with Backbone to really use the remote play feature. Of course, you can use it on your phone without the Backbone. You can do it on tablets. You can uh, link your DualSense to uh, iPhones, iPads, I Androids. You can do it on your computers. I mean... They really have been pushing remote play in a very strong way, uh, and this could be why. Let's see. Supporting adaptive streaming up to 1080p and 60 frames per second, the new device will require constant connectivity to the internet. As for the console's physical features, early prototypes show the console will look a lot like a PlayStation 5 controller, but with a massive 8-inch LCD touchscreen in the center. The device supports adaptive triggers for haptic feedback and will include... Uh, what you would come to expect with, from a handheld, volume buttons, speakers, an audio input jack, etc. Inside Gaming understands the QLite is in its QA phase and is scheduled to release before the PlayStation 5 Pro and after the additional, uh, the, sorry, the detachable disk drive for PS5. All right, so that is before a PS5 Pro, but after the detachable disk drive. That kind of gives us a interesting timeline here as the PS5 Pro as uh uh, reported on last time i talked with everybody was set up to launch i want to say someone said as early as fall 2024 I, 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 that seems so hard to believe i could see maybe 2025 being a much more valuable option who am i to to counter what of course tom henderson and people like that are saying it just seems really hard to believe but technically that is on track with when we got the ps4 pro so you know i'm kind of speaking out of uh, might be behind on, on that specific situation, but I want everyone to uh, understand with, with this specific situation is it it seems like where there's smoke, there's fire, and it's not just something like they're working on for fun. It seems like this thing's coming out. As uh, it came out earlier this week that they're actually hiring for positions that make sense for a cloud environment. Now, I, I know he said that this was not a cloud-specific uh, device doesn't mean that it can't use cloud infrastructure later on to um, kind of play games over the cloud. Uh, so it does insinuate that the Q Lite will be a backbone to a mobile-ish device that PlayStation um, might see maybe being fortuitous for them to step their toes into again. I don't know. They haven't been in the handheld space, of course, since the PlayStation Vita that they quickly dropped, like barely months after it came out. I will be curious to see if this comes to market. I imagine it will. It seems to way, way too. And I trust Tom Henderson on this. I, I think it's just, it's, it's definitely coming. Let's see how this happens. Like what's it, what's going to happen? Um, it isn't going to be running a game, so it's just going to be working on specifically remote play. So maybe this helps with the um, issue of the Vita, meaning if you make a handheld, you have to make games for the handheld. Whereas if you're making this Q Lite device, you don't really have to make games for it. You really just have to have this kind of secondary device that enhances your uh, uh, console that you already have. You can kind of take it on the go with you. It's almost like they are making a handheld, but going halfway with it where the handheld will exist, but it isn't a device that you're buying to play games on. You're 
buying it to play games that are already out on almost right i think i'm being a bit messy with my wording here but i think i'm getting across what i'm meaning here um whereas they don't have to make a storefront they don't have to sit there and, and worry about um the odds and ends of of a separate marketplace and 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 trophies and and you know what features are we gonna have this thing what you know what apps are we gonna put on you know it is just a we're gonna remote play your ps5 to this device that's what it does so really you're just playing your ps5 somewhere else i feel like that's wise i feel like the vita spoke no one wanted it it does seem interesting that we have the steam deck right now that is pretty large in the kind of gaming ecosystem especially for what it is um especially for how expensive it is i feel like people kind of forget or at least overlook the fact that the steam deck is popular and it isn't cheap this thing is very expensive so I feel like it really shows that there is a handheld market for people who want to play these types of. Hmm. There is a handheld market out there. Now, you could argue that the Steam Deck uh, is bought for other reasons, specifically because it is a PC as well. So you're able to manipulate it for your access to things like um, ROMs, if you know what I mean. Um, so maybe that is something that just isn't viable for PlayStation. The Steam Deck is just out there doing what PlayStation can't. And they're already on market. So now you're competing with two people rather than just the Switch as you or Switch slash Nintendo that you were previously, of course, for the Switch. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know. Speaking of control. Uh, oh, sorry. Almost skipped one. So there is an interesting patent. There's two patents we're about to push, uh, go over, which is very funny. It's a new Xbox control patent that can store loadouts. This is via Game Rant. So this is a um, Turtle Beach patent. This was actually a correction that was made. Um, this is actually an older thing, but I did find this and I wanted to bring this up. Turtle Beach could be working on a new Xbox controller that could save custom control layouts and connect to social media at least according to a recent file patent. So if you go to the file patent, there's straight up a controller. It looks pretty wonky. I mean, it looks kind of like a turtle base controller, but it has like loadouts, audio, home. It has like almost like a touch screen on top. It looks very strange. I wanted to bring this up because it's just a strange little thing. Turtle Beach just wants to make this Xbox controller that like you can like touch your loadouts and things. I mean, technically that's what the Elite controller already does. Unless I'm missing something. I want to say that's all it is. Now, it will have a touchscreen. It seems like... Why would you want that? Um, it's very cool. It does. It will show like, your username and then, like, uh, like the battery life, and it tells you, like, that in hours. It, it is, which is kind of cool, but I don't know. I haven't really been big into Turtle Beaches in a very long time, so I feel like if I saw this, I would definitely be like, no thanks. Speaking of controller patents, there seems to be a patent for the DualSense filed by Sony patenting a heat dispenser, presumably. This would replace the shell. Um, sorry, heat dispenser, period. Presumably, this would replace the shell of the DualSense as we know it. It would be a gel-like material as the shell of the controller, and devs could warm it up and cool it down as an added immersion element to the game. One of the uh, components that were brought up of it, or ex at least examples, because, you know, patents, you have to, like, pretty much show like how this would be used and these things but it would say like if you went into a desert it would heat up if you go into the mountains it would, it would be cold this seems like a for a fun patent there's no way this thing's being made um i, I don't think they want to worry about um hurting people with like the way they use their controllers so i think this is just a uh, i say for fun not really for fun of course for um safety reasons right you want to patent things when you think you have a idea that could be used at some point right this is actually a good idea on paper right now with the things that we think of it is not good in execution most likely so that doesn't mean in a couple years though that maybe some sort of technology comes out that makes this much more appealing who knows but right now it is yet a fun thing we could just speculate about. Let's start the show. This is a quick one. EA Sports announces Football Club. Uh, of course, if you remember earlier last year, I want to say, uh, 
EA Sports had to cancel their partnership with FIFA. They were pretty much getting too bold um, and too expensive. Uh, both didn't think they needed the other one, so it kind of resulted in a messy breakup, and FIFA went over um, and is going to probably make some other game. They think they're going to make a game with someone else. I think they are sadly mistaken because that is easier said than done. EA is already coming out with something called a uh, football club. I am uh, apparently they already have sign ons. This is via their official statement over the coming days. The EA sports FC brand. It's it's FC. It's football club will debut in more than 100 matches across the biggest leagues in the world. Football fans will see the new brand identity in the wild for the first time through EA sports partners, including the Premier League, La Liga, uh, Bundesliga, Bundesliga, Serie A, Luge One. WSL, NWSL, oh my god, we're skipping this. Voices from across the world of global football are joining EA Sports to begin a new era of the game with hundreds of leagues, teams, brands, and athletes sharing the EA Sports FC logo through their platforms today. And this is a direct quote. Quote, this is where the story of EA Sports FC begins. We're building a th on 30 years of leadership and history carrying experiences that bring global football community together and continuing to take in the uh, continuing to take in, in the take in the fan first future. Sorry, end quote. Said Nick Oldicky. How much there? Very cool. We'll have to see. Uh, what happens to this game when it comes out? I imagine it'll be just fine. We'll have to really. They have to really trust that people understand what happened, right? They have to understand that if they see FIFA and they see FC Club together that the game that you used to play is the FC Club. FIFA is just the name of the thing that you were playing prior that they broke up for. I feel like if you're a fan of FIFA to the point where you're buying it every year, you at least understand how this works. I imagine most people do. I do not think they have too much to worry about. We'll have to see. But who really knows? Because you really do have to trust... Uh, because the reason these are big is the... I want to say casual market. It's not really casual. That's why I'm using like air quotes if, if you're an audio listener. It's not casual per se, but it is a more cursory glance into the... You have a, you have a more... You have a less knowledgeable approach to the games industry, right? A lot of those people literally buy their systems to play FIFA, to play Madden, to play et cetera, et cetera, right? Their sports game of choice. They don't buy anything else. And if they do, it's one game. And usually that game is Call of Duty. Right. So it's usually a sports machine that has a side of something else. So we really are relying on those people understanding what's going on. I think they will. I think people are, are smart enough to, to figure it out, but we'll have to see. I I think FIFA's name is big, but I think EA Sports FC was able to work with them long enough to where they, they at least understand that, oh, no, this is the game I liked. But I don't know. We'll have to Big news, this caused quite a tizzle, and I commented on my Twitter about this. Redfall will be launching with no 60 frames per second mode and will be released. Oh, sorry, and the and that mode uh and will be released at a later date, meaning the 60 frames per second mode will be released at a later date. This is the official Twitter. Redfall is launching on Xbox console with quality mode only. Xbox Series X 4K at 30 frames per second. Xbox Series S, 1440p, 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second performance mode will be added via game update at a later date. Wow. Wow. This caused quite a stir, I must say. Where do I begin? So it's easy for me to sit here and tell you why this is unwise, especially from them, right? Especially from Redfall, especially from Bethesda, right? They're already kind of on the back foot with... It's been a while since they released, like, a really compelling single-player game. Yeah, I mean, of course, we can bring up Deathloop. But gamers usually have a short uh, memory span. So let's just say that it's been a while since they've really really thrown a banger out right and this redfall thing was always i feel like 
the air around Redfall was always of speculation of not being sure if this is going to be a great game. The debut trailer is one of my favorite debut trailers I've ever seen. It is incredibly cool looking. Debut trailers are cinematics made in the CG or sorry are like CGI cinematics that are made made to make you excited that are not incredibly representative of the game you are playing 98% of the time. So, I feel like at least from my point of view there's always kind of been an air of we don't know if this is good yet. And even the things we see of the game, we're still like, it looks good, but there's still something kind of nagging in your head. Like, is this good? I don't know. Maybe it is good, but not great. Maybe it's great, but it's not amazing. Like, you're not really sure. Um, we're all certain on one thing. It doesn't look incredibly fantastic via the like graphics and the visuals and all these things. But when hearing this news that Redfall is launching in 60 frames, of course, everyone had incredibly negative things to say. I'm right there with you. This is hilariously inexcusable for 2023, uh, especially given that Xbox completely centered their console around being the most powerful thing ever made. Blah, blah, blah. Look at our big giant machine. It's very impressive. And we're here sitting. We're sitting here in 2023. And the first game they have to show for themselves really since the Series X has been out, right? We've had Forza, but we haven't really had a concrete smack in your face console exclusive, similar to something like Last of Us Part uh, 1 or 2, God of War Ragnarok, Demon Souls. These are just a couple things off the top of my head. We don't really have that. This is kind of the first thing that we're getting. Now, maybe that's unfair pressure put onto redfall but that's not really our problem we had a halo infinite that was a massive failure in many parts uh most of the campaign was kind of a joke if you're looking for a story and a cohesive uh narrative in, in a lot of ways and then we have oh well, the multiplayer which was good but it, it was you know it didn't get updates because it wasn't ready and now we have redfall and all eyes are looking at bethesda now is that fair because bethesda was purchased and the, they still haven't made a game that was in development as they were purchased. Like, you know, so this is still a Bethesda game, not really an Xbox games, but we're kind of claiming ownership, I believe. Uh, and you come out and you say, hey, we're 30 frames. Um, we're a first person shooter. I feel like that's important factor here. As an FPS being third for uh, first uh, first person is, in, in my opinion, much more jarring than a 30 frames third person mode as someone who played Plague's Tale and Gotham Knights back to back. Both third person games. Gotham Knights, of course, I feel it much worse because especially since I play as Nightwing. Jesus Christ, like it felt terrible. Not defending it, of course. But seeing this come out as a first person game co-op and we're saying, hey, we can't run at 60 frames at launch. We don't know how to do it. it it's... Quite surprising. Now, I want to play Devil's Advocate as I haven't seen really anyone theorize on why, right? Assumably, again, assumably, you know what we do when we assume, but I feel like I have to here because I'm trying to analyze this situation. Bethesda could delay this. I mean, they really probably could do pretty much whatever they want, right? And let's say they need this update and this comes out in two months later. You know, you couldn't delay it in two months. And I feel like we come to the, the conclusion of why they won't delay it. I feel like there's a couple reasons. One, it's theorized that Starfield is probably coming out in September, maybe October. If we delay the May date of Redfall, right? Let me double check, make sure that's the correct day. I believe it was May 5th. Red Fall release date is May 2nd. May 2nd. Now, if we push that two months, right? You're in July. I find that hard to believe why they wouldn't just do that and get the 60 frames out. Do some more polish. Really make sure this game is tight. Or at least it maybe it's too close to Starfield. Maybe they used up all the clout that they had. Clout's a wrong word. I apologize for using that. Maybe they used all their favors. Maybe they can't. Maybe Arcane literally just can't justify delaying it again. 
maybe they don't want the backlash. We understand that the Xbox community has been hungry for quite a while as someone a part of that community that I can uh, agree to being quite jealous of the PlayStation community as they are getting some of the genre defining game defining legacy defined games over there, right? And we're over here with Halo Infinite barely working at launch. Uh, Halo Infinite needing two years to pretty much finish the game because they need to add Forge and co-op campaign and all these things. It took them over a year to do that. So we're getting unfinished products at launch. And we're about to get Redfall, which still could argue, you could argue is still unfinished because we're not getting the 60 frames, which is inherently assumed by this point. Now, let's bring up the issue of maybe they do not care about 60 frames. Now, we heard Todd Howard say just that on a interview with Lex Friedman on the Lex Friedman podcast. He said he is fine with 30 frames per second. He doesn't really see the need for it in his games. I don't understand this gentleman's idea. I imagine he said that kind of forced because he can't say he wants to, he can't say the other thing and then get like destroyed because he can't release the games on there, right? So I feel like he was almost like caught in a hard spot, like, oh, you know, 30 frames are fine for it, right? Maybe, maybe he was stuck in a corner, but regardless, he said that. So maybe they really are fine with 30 frames, which which brings up two problems. One, we do understand that 30 frames or sorry, 60 frame modes aren't incredibly popular when games are launched. And there's no evidence suggesting that frames, the lack of frames affects how you perform via sales if someone has that evidence please show it to me as i would love to educate myself i highly doubt it's out there uh because we probably would have seen it by now or someone would have talked about it i feel like there really isn't a motivation to make sure this is in your game why because we have two things that come up here one if you're hardcore enough to care about frames that much are you on a console this is kind of new in our, our ecosystem, right? The console ecosystem, this need for more frames, right? It's kind of a whiplash effect, I feel like, to devs, right? We've been fine with 30 frames, really, since 2020. I mean, this really, 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 really sit here and think about that. We've kind of not been used to 60 frames since 2020. But since that happened, that's kind of what we all want now. We all want a high fidelity experience. Now, why did I say we all want? I even fell in the trap that I feel like a lot of people on Twitter. Let's remind ourselves, Twitter, not real place, right? <laughs> not, not real. So we can't really judge what we see there on the outer environment of our world. But for an example bunch of people pretty much unanimously even if you were a major fan and you're kind of those weird people that really like xbox like kind of the weirdos that are like are way too serious about this thing we're even dogging on this but how many people are really basing their purchasing decision on the fact that is there a 60 frame per second option on my console and how many of those people don't have a PC, so they just go to the PC and buy it there? Maybe that's the stats that Xbox is working on. Maybe Xbox sees these things, or there's just maybe an understanding in the gaming um, dev community space that frames doesn't really sell games, right? Maybe frames isn't that big a deal yet. Maybe we're at the precipice of it being a big deal. Again, we have no firm data that suggests you lose sales given not launching with a performance mode. Nothing. It's not out there. I haven't seen it. I imagine if you're listening to this, you haven't seen it. And if you have, again, let me know. All of this being said... I want to I want everyone to really think about this. Did your purchase 
be defined by this news. Gotham Knights sold incredibly well, especially given how it launched. <laughs> it kind of didn't work. It was slow. It didn't load really great. A lot of the um uh uh how can I say this? Like performance of the game was incredibly bad in the aspects of the game actually working. Uh, yet it charted for months. That's a big deal. Of course, it has the name Gotham in it, but I don't know. I find it incredibly strange that they would come out here and say that. And I find it strange that it's not going to be in there as it should be kind of assumed we want that. But yet. I'm still buying this game. Maybe I'm part of the problem. But. To me. I feel like there isn't enough data to sway someone. There's just probably not enough data out there to suggest. We need a 60 frames per second mode or we won't sell or it translates to missed dollars. I don't know. I don't know. This is, of course, all speculation and analysis on my part. But I want everyone really at home to think about that, right? Frames might not sell games, and that's why they probably don't care about it. Bethesda, famous for their games being incredibly janky years after they're made. Why would this be any different, I guess? And I, I got into it. I got into it. I, I got into an interesting conversation with someone, with one of my friends uh, over at Podcast PXN. Uh, Dan over there, uh, I tweeted out, the worst news about this is Starfield is going to be 30 frames. Uh, and he very much was like, oh, I'll take that bet. Guaranteed a 60 at launch. Or guaranteed 60. And I specified like, yeah, I, I want to be sh clear about this. I do not think it will be at launch. And I really don't think Bethesda cares about this. Because again, it's almost like we've all done a 180 on them. We've only really cared about this in the last three years. The console space. The PC space is completely different. I have, of course, not talking about them. They've cared about frames. I mean, geez. 2009 or something like that. When did Counter-Strike come out? I remember that was a big deal, right? I don't remember when, like, the first big... Whenever, like, it became competitive. Oh, I, I, wasn't it a big deal in Quake 2? Like, th and there's so many different examples you can think of that frames were very important in, especially in the early stage of, of like the environment of PC gaming tournaments and all these things. But in the console space, it just never was a big deal. And now we're over here like, where's my 60 frames? Where is it? You've had three years. Three years might not be enough time. Who knows? Again, as an Xbox person, I look over at PlayStation. I see God of War Ragnarok, 60 frames per second, cracked out modes. I see Horizon, 60 frames uh, per second, cracked out. Looks amazing. And I have Halo Infinite. I have Forza Horizon. Great game. But not the same thing. They have Last of Us Part 1 remastered. Beautiful. 60 frames per second. And I'm over here. On the third party game, playing Resident Evil 4, Persona 4 Golden. A game that was on PS2. <laughs> Food for thought. Let me know what you thought of these Arbians. I'm going to be clipping this out uh, separately. As I know people like clips. They like shorter content sometimes. So this is going to be going out there. Let me know your thoughts on what I said. And thank you for listening. Now, we're not ending the show quite yet. We have a couple things to cover before I let you go. This is going to be a tweet. This is going to be a tweet live moments ago from when I started recording. We're going to at Destiny 2 Team. I'm going to be quoting this. I'm going to tell you why this was reached out or why this was tweeted out. Community interaction and engagement. Oh, sorry. Echo. This is via Destiny 2 Team. That's literally the name. It's a new community thing destiny 2 has been doing 
Community interaction and engagement is central to Bungie in our games. For years, we've invited creators and other members of the community to con con sorry, confidential summits to provide feedback on the future of Destiny. This is a beloved part of the process, but relies heavily on trust. Breaches of this trust could result in our inability to hold more summons. We take these breaches extremely seriously and are taking actions to reinforce our policies with those invited to these internal meetings. Now, why did they tweet this out? I think most people could assume why they did. It's because someone broke NDA. If you're not in the Destiny 2 community, I don't blame you for not knowing this. I thought this was just an interesting thing to bring up as someone did break NDA. I feel like NDA is pretty important, newsworthy. Someone, I want to say about a week ago, uh, released images of the next season of Destiny and pretty much knew the entire plan from weapons being released to abilities being tuned to um exotics being reworked to how certain things will function and someone just completely leaked all of it they took pictures of the slides they took pictures of what some of the guns would look like and they released it uh and they've kind of been silent on this since then and they just kind of decided to say something now in response to it and i don't really have too much to add other than that I wanted to bring this to attention. I do find it curious that the regular crowd of people that really take NDAs incredibly seriously are back out there really making it sound like you are like killing like a dog or something when, when you break NDA. I want to be clear before I joke. Uh, of course, I'm joking here. But let me be clear about the critiques I'm about to say. NDAs are incredibly important. You should not break them. But if you do break them, I don't care. I didn't break them. Someone I love didn't break it. So it's on you if you made a stupid decision. I'm going to look at what you broke. If it really mattered, don't report on it and ignore it. And, it'll, you know, it'll evaporate. But a lot of people take this this things w way too seriously. Um, If you're not directly involved, of course, if you're directly involved, I can understand why you're upset. I saw a community manager at Destiny kind of be like, you know, you kind of break our trust when you do this. It, it, you know, it hurt, you know, kind of hurts our it hurts uh, it's it kind of insinuates it hurts their feelings i was like doesn't really hurt your feelings you're getting paid regardless so but but hey you know they take pride in their work i i'm not trying to say that they don't or insinuate that that's not important it just the way people act when these things happen is just i don't know it's just strange to me when i see someone like fanning themselves like i couldn't believe someone broke in the a ah! and i'm just over here like uh, who cares Someone made a dumb decision. People make dumb decisions all the time. I don't need to comment on how bad they are. You shouldn't drink and drive. I'm not going to comment on drinking and driving. You know why? Because we all agree it's stupid if you do it. Same thing with NDAs. You shouldn't break NDAs. If you do, you suck. But I get cool news to read about. So I appreciate it, I guess. But you shouldn't do it. But you shouldn't talk like someone just live streamed up murder of a puppy or something it's not it's not that serious moving on date updates it's official suicide squad killed a justice lead has been delayed this has been talked about for about a month now and this is what they had to say about it rocksteady of course via uh twitter an image that they released we have made the tough but necessary decision to take the time needed to work on getting the game to be the best quality experience for players Thank you to our amazing community for the continued support, patience, and understanding. There is much more to share in the months ahead, and we look forward to seeing you in Metropolis next year. You heard that right. Next year. The new release date is as followed. February 2nd, 2024. Quite a delay. That is nine months delay. Something more significant. This means Rocksteady would not have been releasing, uh, would not have released the game in almost... Uh, 11 years or something like that. It's a little shorter because they released Arkham VR, but as a core major title, it's going to be like 11 years. Wow. Um, yeah. I spoke with this with a, uh, my, my brother about this. When, when they announced the delay, I was like, that, whatever. I mean, 
it's hard to be excited about it because it looks just like everything else right when i first saw it, it again it looks like it's fun but am i really excited to play another like game you know Av- avengers type thing it looks like a better avengers i'll give it that not really a glowing review i know but upon looking at it i was like okay um am i really gonna be engaged to fight these purple turret base things it looks like it look. I mean, it looks like far. You know what? It looks like Far Cry. It looks like an Assassin's Creed checkbox. Hey, you're. Hey, are you online? Let's go do a base before you know. It, it seems like that. I'm hoping it's fun. It's hard to be excited when it doesn't seem like there's any really individuality. Seeing Harley Quinn with a minigun is not like. Okay, like what? <laughs> like I don't know. It just doesn't seem identifiable to her character. She's swinging around like Spider Man. I understand you need some way of traversing. I'm not hitting them for that. It's just when I see these things, I'm like, what's going on? Um, I don't know. The writing seems good. There was one thing I cringed at. I I don't remember what it was anymore. When they showed the latest trailer, I think at a state of play. Um, but it seems like they took it seriously. They took the feedback very seriously and said, you know what, we're delaying this. Um, I'm curious what they're going to be doing in this next nine months. Um, there was a rumor that they're reworking the always online ability. So maybe they're going to try a single player approach or maybe like an offline approach. Like, hey, you know, you can play this offline. So like, don't feel like you have to like play like this online co-op game. So maybe that's what this delay is. It's going to take them nine months to do that. That's pretty crazy, but we'll see. I'm, I'm curious what the final product will look like. We saw what it looked like in the trailer. Again, it looked again. I did not get excited. I was like, cool. I would much rather be the justice league doing anything else. I would have much rather to get the rumor Batman beyond game. That was going to happen with Batman's son being Batman. I mean, Jesus, I get fuck. I, every time I hear about that game, I'm like, how? How did you <laughs> go from that to let's try and make a microtransaction games as a service mess? Let's we'll have to see. I really am really sad that we have not seen Rocksteady in 10 years. That is a shame. Someone very identifiable from the 360 era. Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight. Those are some of the best games of that generation. And we're seeing none of them. Very sad. Uh, There was a new Remedy logo announced. Not important for what we're doing here, but what was important information is that they reaffirmed Alan Wake 2 will be coming out later this year. We haven't heard anything of it. We only saw that debut trailer a while ago. Let's see. Hard to believe. But Remedy does not let us down. Eh, unless you talk about Crossfire. Then they kind of do. Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters are confirmed to be coming to PS4 and Switch on April 19th. I'm going to be having a very busy April. As April 19th is both Burning Shores, the Horizon DLC, Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters, and couple days um like about 10 days after that we have star wars and two days after the 19th is advanced wars one and two so in theory i'm gonna have like 10 games to play so like god i'm I'm going to be very busy very excited though final fantasy pixel remasters immediately going to six i need to play it it's been a very long time i played it with my dad a very long time ago Going straight to Advanced Wars 1 when that comes out. I'll probably be flipping back and forth on that. Horizon Burning Shores, I imagine I'll get done in two-day play. And then I'm immediately, boom, going to Final Fantasy 6 and Advanced Wars. Very excited. This already came out. Uh, the second expansion to uh, Vampire Survivors, Tides of the Foscari. Very, very, uh, that came out the 13th, so as of recording, it's already out. Go check it out. 
As reported previously, Quantum Break was and has left Xbox Game Pass, but Remedy stated after some people were quite sad about its departure that it just needed some license renewals and it will be back after that is done. I found this interesting. Quantum Break both left and came back. It shows a respect for their previous IP. I feel like that's kind of rare in our current ecosystem of the games industry. How many studios really care that much about a previous game that, let's be honest, didn't sell well because it came out around the Xbox One launch. It was an Xbox exclusive when the Xbox was dead for quite a while. It was not very popular to have one. And it also wasn't very popular to release your games on there either. And they came back and were like, hey, we're going to keep it on there. That's very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder why. Why? Is it just a care for their products? Is it someone at Xbox kind of like, hey... <clears throat> You know, let, let's get this back on there. You know, let's let's renew our uh, our stuff. And they were just like, sure. I don't know. I really don't know. If you have a thought on this, let me know. Arc 2 is delayed until the end of 2024. And the gameplay reveal will be until next year. So nothing really to report on that. Arc 2 is heavily delayed. Um, Their first game is getting remastered. It's going to be called Arc Survival Ascended. This is going to be coming um, August this year ps5 xbox series x and pc official service for the original arc will shut down in august so you have very short time uh to transition so you, if you want to keep playing arc you must get the new one for the new systems uh xbox game with golds for april they've already been live out of space couch edition peaky blinders mastermind terrible i'm not covering this moving on diablo 4 xbox series x bundle official announced <coughs> officially announced i'm sorry it's going to be launching June 6th. It's going to be $559.99. Pre-orders have already began. I believe they're, I think they're sold out. I don't remember. It includes Diablo 4, um, the base game, as well as additional in-game items. The PS Plus April lineup. Sackboy Big Adventure for PS4, PS5. Meet Your Maker, PS4, PS5. Tales of Iron, PS4, PS5. This is your PS Plus April lineup. That's the free stuff. So make sure you claim all that. All those are PS5 games too. Very nice. Pokemon Stadium is coming to Switch online April 12th. Live a Live coming to PS4, PS5, Steam on April 27th. Very happy about that. Very happy about that. I did not buy it on Switch. Glad I waited. Because I can just play it on PS5, get trophies. Perfect. This is going to be everything coming to Xbox Game Pass this month. Loop Hero, console and PC. Iron Brigade, console and PC. Ghostwire Tokyo, already live. This this was uh, this just came to Xbox Game Pass. So you can play this right now, April 12th. So it's already out. You can just play it. Um, I'm going to be playing this soon. I want to try it out. It looks weird as fuck. NHL 23. This is going to be on consoles. You get play. Minecraft Legends. This is a big launch. Console, cloud console and PC April 18th. This is available day one Game Pass. Very many people are excited about this. I'm curious if this is going to be popular. Is this what people want? I don't know. But there you go. That's going to be everything there. Let's talk about things leaving April 15th. So this is going to be gone. Life is Strange True Colors, Cloud Consoles PC. Make sure you buy that. Very good game. Moon Glow Bay, Cloud Console PC. This was a popular indie game. I don't quite remember what it was about, but I remember it being good. I think it was like a text adventure-ish game. Or maybe it was like a visual novel game. Who knows? Panzer Corpse 2. This is only a PC title. Rainbow Six Extraction, Cloud Console PC. The Dungeon of, oh my god, Nahilbeck? Cloud Console PC, The Long Dark Cloud Console PC, and The Rift Breaker Cloud Console PC. Lots of generic names in the last two there. Terrible names. And that's it. Of course, we have left is what's queued. This is, of course, what's queued up for your week. It could be a game, podcast, TV show, a book, comic book, manga, anything. This, of course, adds to yourself. Remember, comment below, tweet at me. What do you have queued up? I'm going to be finishing Persona 4 Golden. I'm right on the precipice of finishing this game. I think I have a month left of in-game time. And that could be knocked down about four hours. So I suspect after I finish my movie adventures today, uh, most of my day today is filled, so I probably won't be going back to it. I'm going to be go watching the Mario movie. And what's the other movie? John Wick 4 with my wife today. Very excited. Once that's done... I'm probably going to finish up Persona 4 Golden and just be ready for the 19th and just patiently wait. Patiently wait. Once that 19 hits, 
Burning Shore immediately, followed by Advance Wars and Final Fantasy Pixar Masters. I could be more excited, but of course, <clears throat> that's going to be it for your Easy TV Game Podcast for the week. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all these things. You know what to do. Podcast service, five star review. That helps the algorithm. That pimps us out more. That gets us out to everywhere. Aside from that, that's all I have for you. Remember, you could tweet at me from those dialogues. I really am curious what people think about the Red Ball thing. Let me know if you agree or disagree or maybe have a different thought process altogether. I don't know. I'm sure this will, that specific segment will be popular with many people. We'll have to find out. Thank you so much. Remember, touch it.